As you can see, I'm somewhere very special. I am down at the McLaren Technology Center because this weekend at the Monaco Grand Prix, they've worked together with the Senna Foundation to produce an incredible one-off livery, and it's this. This is a full livery redesign of the MCL 38 of McLaren honoring 30 years of their most successful driver, Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna is celebrated today as one of Formula One's all-time greatest drivers. His legacy includes three world championships, 41 race wins, and 65 pole positions. Now, doing these livery designs isn't an easy case of just designing whatever you'd like. It comes with plenty of restrictions from the sport, and it can take months for the teams to get the approval. So how is a livery like this designed and what are the rules that each team needs to follow? It's probably been about an 18 month journey that we've been on from the very first iterations and designs. The inspiration was really taken from Senna's helmet because that we felt really represented him as a driver. Of course there are other liveries like the red and white livery which you'll have seen today. The red and white livery really represents an era of McLaren and it's not unique to Senna. We had other incredible drivers that drove in part of that era. With Senna, his absolute love for Brazil, his homeland, comes through in those vibrant colours. And don't forget that drivers don't choose car liveries. The helmet is the one thing that our drivers choose. And obviously that was what Senna was passionate about. McLaren haven't just added on the colour profile, they've also added in a few extra small details around the car. The McLaren logo on the front wing has returned to how it first appeared back in the 1980s, along with Senna's logo on the bodywork. And just inside the driver's headrest, it reads, I have no idols, I admire work, dedication and competence. Monaco is not a race where we necessarily have to worry so much about weight. One of the lesser races where we can afford to run a little bit more vinyl than perhaps a race like Monza, for example. It came in a gloss and it just felt more fitting for that celebration from the 80s, that era and that kind of time in which Senna was alive and, and racing for us. So then let's quickly go through the restrictions, not only for McLaren, but all Formula One teams face when designing a livery. The first rule that's in place is that both cars for the team have to have the exact same livery. At the very beginning of each Formula One season, when all the teams are revealing their brand new liveries, this has been classed as their base design. And if they're wanting to make any significant change to that base design over the course of the season, then it has to be with the agreement of the FIA and the commercial rights holder, that being Formula One. And one of the many reasons is simply because of how Formula One has commercialized how the teams look during that season, whether it's been used in a Formula One game or for marketing materials. So any significant changes or a complete revamp of the whole livery has to have the approval from them and the FIA. So this is what we would call a full livery swap. And that's done in the field from Sunday of Imola to the Wednesday of Monaco. Both chassis, so Lando and Oscar's cars, will be stripped down and all of the bodywork and components that go with it, with a team of six people doing that in the field. We call the, the other example would be a livery enhancement. So the majority of our base livery would be maintained. So you'll still typically look at the car and recognize it as a McLaren, but it will be enhanced and talks to whatever it is we're celebrating at that particular moment in time. All of this has to be approved. So we would have submitted these designs to FIA Formula One over six months ago. So consequently, there are always upgrades to the bodywork. The livery itself has to be iterated and worked on continually as we go through. They'll receive daily updates from our aero team with upgrades, which then they, they then have to translate across. CAD, Cinema 4D programs, finesse the design as you go into that process. So obviously that, that happened um, back in December and January before we launched our car. There'll be a stipulation of how many we can do. And ultimately it's to that point about us not wanting to show up on track with multiple teams changing liveries and completely confused fans. And obviously how we apply our partner's branding to, to, to the livery is obviously important as well. Uh, they're the lifeblood of the team. So we need to make sure we represent them in, in the best possible way. The next rule doesn't have a huge impact on the car's livery, but it does affect how it looks. And that being one one of the drivers within the team has to have a predominantly fluorescent yellow sticker applied and have that for the whole entire season. Thus making it really clear of which one of your drivers is currently out on the circuit. On to then the finer details of the restrictions. First of all, the name or the emblem of the make of the car must appear on the front nose, which in either case be at least 25 millimeters in its largest dimension. Next up, the name of the driver must be super clear on the external bodywork and each car to carry the competition number of its driver as published by the FIA 
at the beginning of the championship. So this number being very clearly visible on the front and the back of the car and also on the driver's crash helmet. But as you can tell with this livery, it's slightly different. They've actually got approval to actually not have a driver number on the front, but have it be replaced with the Senna logo. And as you might have seen in a few earlier shots, this is also a partnership with McLaren Automotive with their McLaren Senna road car. They've also come up with their own unique livery, which was hand painted featuring the man himself on the side of the car. So what do you think of the new livery? I really like it. I'm glad it's a full takeover, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. A huge thanks to McLaren for inviting me down here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.